Hello, craft beer friends, and welcome to Season 9, Episode 7 of Tap to Craft Podcast. I am Denny Lewis coming to you from Boise, Idaho, and my partner in craft, the dog whisperer, and my favorite Florida man from Tampa, Florida, Mr. Chris McKenzie. How are you doing tonight? Oh, uh, I am doing so good, Denny. I'm uh, <laughs> ready to drink some beer with you today. Uh, nothing, me too. Me nothing too. Uh, crazy happened today, which, you know, it's, it's not like we had the day off and then, you know, shit hit the fan or anything, but, <laughs> you know, uh, we're throwing a show together on a Thursday. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is definitely unexpected. And any, any of our live listeners who join us, we will be very grateful because, uh, like I said, this wasn't planned, but uh, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go uh, without a, without a show this week, and some stuff came up that was going to prevent us from recording on our normal time, and I didn't want to. Bird and Chris was trying to record three shows in three weeks for the next three episodes, so we're going to go ahead and throw together a little show tonight, but it's going to be fun because we do have some tasting notes we're going to do. But hey, I don't want to get into that. Uh, well, oh, you know what? We will get into that. We kind of have to. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but first, you know what? I, I'm also doing well. Uh, a little like this is going to be one of those shows that is, uh, you know, we're, we're probably going to, you know, just shoot from the hip. It's OK. Yeah, uh, we can have those every so often, but it should be fun. We are going to be drinking some uh, some new beers to me and some beers that Chris has had, but we get to share together, which will be fantastic. But before we get into all that. I always want to let anyone new listening to Tap to Craft know what Tap to Craft is all about. We are an educational podcast focused on celebrating all things craft beer because we want to help you along in your craft beer journeys and adventures. And you are listening to episode 215. We're recording on Thursday, October 13th, 2022. Yes, this is not the Monday. This is the week before the release. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are on live. We are live on Facebook, and we hope we can get some of our listeners to uh, find us and join us and interact with us on the show. If you want to, if you want to join us, normally we would be on the Monday before release uh, on Twitter and on Facebook. And this episode, we're going to just kind of do a quick recap of the Great American Beer Fest 2022 medal winner. When the, the stats and the medal winners, not all of them. There's a lot of medal winners. But the top five uh, category winners, like we always do, uh, almost every year. Last year, I think I boycotted it because uh, Idaho didn't have any medal winners, and I was frustrated. So I think we briefly talked about it. I think Chris had a topic that he, he threw together real quick. But, but, but hey, Idaho did have a couple winners. So, hey, we're going to go ahead and talk about that. <laughs> this, this time. take it and, and we are going to do those, that tasting note segment with Berry House Beer Company out of Tampa, Florida. They're in Tampa, right? Mm -hmm. or, yeah. And we have two beers that Chris was so kind to send me a little care pack, a little porch bomb. Affected. Uh, I got home and it was sitting there waiting for me. And I was like, oh, that box looks familiar. It just <laughs> happens to be the same box that I sent Chris, uh, you know, a little bit before, a couple of weeks before that. And he sent it back full of beer. So, so that worked out perfect. So what do you want? What do you want? You want to go light or dark first? I thought we, well, I want to go dark. Okay. You want to go light? No. Okay, wait, if you want to go light, let's go light. I didn't say that. I just said, let's just, <laughs> where do you want to start? Because I got to make sure I pour it in my appropriate berry house glass. Oh, you have, oh, nice. You have a couple berry house glass. Yeah, so we are going to talk about the, the, the dark Munich style Dunko, and we're going to do tasting on the Tampa Export, which is a Dortmunder or Export Lager. And of course, you can count on Chris and I having some great conversation along the way so yeah let's go ahead and open up this dark beer i'm gonna pour into my stout b cup okay i have connor. two cups in case i didn't finish connor's here with us too oh, what's up nice. buddy nice uh so let's see we'll pour this in here oh yeah nice pour nice nice glass i love the willie becker style glass that you have there chris and it was funny when, does I, it right. when i bought this I even rinsed it out, but oh well. When I bought this, I couldn't <laughs> tell, and it's really hard to see on it here. There's a, it's like a gold rim on it. Oh yeah, I see it. Yeah. yeah. And um, I was in the brewery, and I'm going, nah, it's just a light reflection because I don't, you know, I don't. I really like the glass because it's got their their logo on it. Um, 
and I'm going, eh, I don't, I don't want a gold rimmed glass. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, so oh, pretentious. that's right. Connor. I totally forgot about that. They're doing a berry house takeover at Gasparilla pizzeria. Oh, Rowlers tomorrow. Wow. wow. Bummer that work. this won't air for another week, but well, uh, <laughs> anyone live listening will will be will get that for sure. But okay. Did you show off the can? It's the oh, dark. I didn't. Yeah, it's the this one's called the dark. Uh, and it's just got some dark lights here. Light posts, old fashioned, nice. Now, Berry House is a really cool place. Um, as far as all their beers go, and uh, they are lager only. Lager only. Lager only uh, when it comes down to the beers that they produce. So it's, uh, they kind of call it their family tradition, which they also, am I breaking up at all? Uh, no, you, you froze earlier, but you're not breaking up now. Okay. Um, <laughs> just making sure. Uh, I'm going to give myself some priority here. <laughs> yeah. Um, make sure you get those, get the family off the uh, YouTube and Netflix. Yeah, so it's a great place. They have some phenomenal beers. They are uh, steeped in tradition when it comes down to these guys. Um, so it is a cool place to go if you can make it down to Tampa. It is uh, just uh, east of the downtown area in an area called Ebor City. So you can go check them out. And if uh, any of our listeners They're ever make up. Okay. I just switched it. Am I, am I good? You're roboting. Okay. Okay. Now, now you're, now you, your, your video is frozen. Okay. Your video is unfrozen. Uh, just told me my connection's unstable. Oh no. Oh, oh well. my gosh. Well, this I'm is going to be one of those shows, everyone. One of those shows where, where uh, anything can go wrong, will go wrong. But and hey, I'm it's hardwired still... today too. <laughs> That's what she uh, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay so we'll hop on there um but yeah it's just uh, just east of downtown in a section called ebor city which it's good for people watching and some pretty good beer spots too okay well chris uh let's i'll go ahead and talk a little bit let your internet catch up to you uh so i'm the the look of this it's a nice uh well you know what it's kind of an yeah, I don't know. It's kind of an ugly brown, a little bit slight coppery color. A uh, little bit, uh, not as clear as uh, some of these because I can't see through it. Um, it might be your plastic too. It might be the plastic. Yeah, mine. Mine's crystal clear. Okay. How how, it, how was your head when you first poured it? Mine, I didn't have any head at all when I poured this. It thing. uh, it lasted for about a half a second and then half it a disappeared. Second? Yeah. 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 So. Uh, interesting that there's not much head retention. I would say that if it did have a head, it would be um, a light, a light tan, or maybe a dark cream. <laughs> is that, is yeah, that what thing, what it was? Cream? Yeah, like a what was there of it? It was maybe a light beige, dark cream. Okay, okay. and yeah, that can cream. filled the filled the cup all the way to the rim, all the way to the top. So this mm -hmm. one, this filled it up. I have a little bit of a space here, so this must be more than 16 ounce, or I got gypped in my can. Maybe. What do you think? I got gypped by a, uh, a good ounce? <laughs> maybe. Or two? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, those might be 17 and a half ounce cups. You never know. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Joel, you know what? Joel, Joel does it right. He gives us yeah. big cups. We need big cups. He gives you he room for a head. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Okay, so taking a whiff of this, Um, I don't know if it's just me, but I almost, which I know there's no cinnamon here, but I kind of get this weird cinnamon, but I don't, it's not really cinnamon. I'm sure it's, it's something with the, with the malts are using is maybe making it smell like it's. I didn't take a drink. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm having trouble uh, pinpointing this uh, this malt character, but it's not. I wouldn't say it doesn't smell toffee. Oh, you know what? Maybe it is. Maybe it is a uh, like a like a burnt brown sugar. 
Now, now I got my nose in here a little bit more. Maybe that's what it is. It's not cinnamon. It, you know how when you when you uh, caramelize brown sugar and it kind of gives off that aroma. That's kind of what the aroma is. Yeah. And it, and and for some reason my nose was thinking cinnamon. I've been eating a lot of cinnamon. It's supposed to be good for my body, so I've been eating cinnamon. So maybe I just have an overdose of cinnamon in my. Maybe nose. you could just you guys snorting lines of it now or what? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, you know, you see those people do that dumb cinnamon yes. teaspoon challenge yes. or whatever. I I use a, a half of a teaspoon in my oatmeal. And my gosh, that is a lot of cinnamon. <laughs> and I'm even eating it with oatmeal. And it's a lot of cinnamon. Yeah. And it doesn't mix well with like almond milk and stuff. It's it, it, nothing. It's it it pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, hey, you took a sip or didn't take a sip. But maybe it's allegedly, a sip. I'm, yeah. I'm I mean, going to take a sip too and, and and get this out. I I I'll tell you, the aroma is not. I'll, I'll be honest with you, the aroma is not too special. I, like I said, it's hard to pinpoint what it is. I think it's coming across like it's <clears throat> uh, like a really caramelized or even uh, uh, blowtorched <laughs> brown sugar, brulee, br- brown sugar. brulee, yeah, like a brulee. Actually, good. Brulee, like a brulee top is what it kind of comes across in the aroma. Okay. Now I got that out of my way. Let's taste this thing. If you already taste it, go ahead and give your tasting. Uh... Well, no, I'm, I'm, I was trying to get some room in my glass so I could get it to move around a little bit just to kind of get, <laughs> see if I can find the same notes you're getting. And I, t- I see what you mean by that cinnamon. Also, now that I've tasted it a couple of times too. It kinda, but I, it's, but it, it, yeah, I still, feel like cinnamon but i know there's no cinnamon here i just feel yeah. like like how when you eat cinnamon it gives you that uh um it's like that, that that earthy taste. flavor to it it's a yeah nutty, earthy, earthy nutty flavor. nutty mm-hmm. yeah very well so it's, it's a it's a nutty type flavor good good point i think you nailed it maybe it's a it's a nutty flavor that to me is coming across kind of cinnamony <laughs> and also like cre- creme brulee ish mm-hmm. um but i'll tell you what the flavor is really good Actually, yeah. it's really clean. Um, it, it's it's not. It's it feels like it should be sweet, and there is a little bit of sweet sensation in there, but it's mm-hmm. not like it's like like certain you know sweet like you're drinking a bunch of sugar water or anything. Yeah. Um, it actually tastes really good and really smooth, and and uh, it's an easy. It's a, it's a really easy drinking beer. Yeah, this one's a real easy one to drink. Actually, the first time I ever had this one was uh, the first time that I got to sit down with John and Kristen Ream. Oh, um, I, I, when you you guys went to Berry House. Yeah, we went to Berry House. Um, and we were just, eh, shut up. Um, I had been wanting to go there and I was like, yeah, let's just meet over there. And um, this was actually the beer that I picked up. Connor's drinking a, a Mighty Glad Kind of his descent, descent craft brewing glass. Oh, nice! Yeah. I would focus. Descent. <clears throat> you know, I did write some. I did write what was on the side of the can here. It says a shadowy Bavarian style lager with a unique blend of Munich and specialty malts, which is reminiscent of freshly baked bread. Mm, I don't know about fresh bread. Molten toffee. Okay, there there's go. some of that. That burnt cream brulee stuff that's kind of what i'm tasting is like that cream brulee and a whisper of chocolate i don't taste any chocolate <laughs> i'll agree with the molten toffee although i've never heard of molten toffee but that must be it's got to be that same like cream brulee thing i'm thinking well, that would of, right? just that would be like liquid candy sugar liquid candy sugar okay uh rich malt com- complexity yet decidedly drinkable I- i'll agree with that mm-hmm. I-, I will say there is complexity to this because i it's hard to pull things out, right? It's like, it's a, it is a complex flavor. No, um, as far as bread goes, I'd go more bread crust than I, just I would say bread, bread crust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say it's not doughy at all. Mm-hmm. I would say you're right. The crust, the crust is what I would say if it was bready. Um, but this is very drinkable. I, uh, I really like this beer because this I really mean, good. it's even the color of bread crust. Mm-hmm. I've had my can sitting out for a while too. 
so it's not too cold. Um, it's actually it's it's actually right at the perfect uh, drinking temperature. It's probably right about 50, 53 degrees. If I were that's, to that's a pretty specific zing, temperature. If I were to take my little finger thermometer here, I'd say it's about fifty three degrees. It's like it's like uh, really nice uh, drink, not too not too cold, not too warm. Uh, is able to give off all the uh, flavor that you need to. Uh, it's not retracting my taste buds. It does have some uh, bubbles in there too, coming up off the mm-hmm. sides of the glass, which is oh. nice to see. It's got some. Uh, does that one have uh, the nucleation bubbling thing? I got really excited because when I bought this glass, I was super excited about it because I, you probably can't see it, but there's <laughs> there's uh, two drops carved in the bottom of the glass and i was like oh sweet it's etched in the bottom yeah it's on the outside oh no they put it on the wrong side yeah yeah i like the ones that are etched because it really does bring out uh flavors and stuff and of course these b cups aren't etched but th- you can definitely see the bubbles on the side of the cup coming up and it's kind of it's kind of nice it means it's, it's oh, got yeah, some I'm, uh, I'm seeing it in there some good carbonization or carbonation. carbonation. There, there, there I go again. I mentioned <laughs> last show. I can't. I can't not say that. Just making um, up words again. I'll say the body is uh, medium-ish. It's not light. It's got a decent body, but not too heavy. It's like a. I'd say medium. medium I go light, light medium, yeah. or medium light, whatever you want to go with that one. But it's definitely. I feel it's definitely in between the the light and the medium. The mouthfeel just feels good. A little bit of coating on the inside of your mouth uh, with some of the s- sweetness, but it's not, it's definitely not overly sweet. Finish is very, uh, I'll say it drops, the finish drops off really quick. Mm-hmm. You don't get a lot of lingering flavors that come out after you drink it. You get it right at the, right as you swallow, you get it right there at the back of your tongue, and then it goes away really quick. So it's not going to hang on forever. Uh, yeah, I like this. Yeah, I'm I'm halfway through it. I I, I don't want to drink it all on one uh, in one sitting. I mean, one one uh, one segment here. I, we need to get on to some other stuff. Well, here, listen, but... we can we can continue, you know move into some other stuff on the yeah. show uh, because we tend to you and I, Denny, when we start doing a tasting segment, these disappear rather quick. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So I I was hoping I'd be able to drink this one through our our next two uh, segments, and then we'll we'll Let's pop do open. That. We'll pop open the next one before we get into the Ruba segment. So, Perfect. all right. So, you know, everyone, Chris and I would love to thank all of our Patreon supporters because this episode is brought to you in part by our satisfied Patreon supporters like Mike Allen, Bill Schlemmer, Kevin and Amanda Argauer, Mark Reedy, Mike Blanchard, Tara and Jim Kutzel, or Cheryl, Tara Carlson and Jim Kutzel, and Alex Fuchs, who are our virtual producers, Tom Byrne, Jeff Seiler, Johan Halberg, Chad Massa, Mark Church, and Eric Gronley, who want to buy us a virtual beer. And if you enjoy the content we provide, we invite you to support the show by either toasting your host or buying us a virtual beer or even becoming a virtual producer. You can explore the options on our support page by visiting patreon.com slash tap the craft. Now, I don't think we got any, we didn't get any feedback uh, through email or, or voicemail or anything, but it, we do have those things. If you want to send us a voicemail, we'd love to hear from you. Just call us at 208-536-3359. Or if it's easier for you to remember, 208-53-ODDLY. O-D-D-L-Y. Leave whatever you want. Tell us you love us. Tell us you no, love no. us. Yeah, yeah. So only that. Only, only good stuff. <laughs> Share your uh, craft beer journey. Share something exciting that happened to you. Share your favorite beer. Uh, whatever you want. Just call and leave us a message. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're too shy, you can go old school. Leave us an email at taptocraft.gmail.com. Or if you're still into social media, uh, sometimes we can be found on Twitter and Instagram at taptocraft. And Chris can always be found on Facebook at facebook.com slash taptocraft. And don't forget, we do have our Tap to Craft podcast website at taptocraft.com. And we are running our third Frost Buddy contest. 
And we have we now have four entries into this thing. Uh, I, I don't know when we're going to close this. I need to I need to revisit the. Uh, have to listen the to the episode again. To yeah, to listen to the episode said. again. I, I forgot. I feel like we were going to do it at the end of this season because doesn't doesn't our season end? <laughs> no, we already ended the season. We're in season nine now. We're in season nine, yeah. But I sw- I swore we were going to do it at the end of a season, or I don't know. There was a, like a fair amount of time to get. I, I was doing it. Yeah, let me look. I got to look back and see when we gave our last one away. And then I'll do three months from there. So I'll, in the next episode, I'll let you know when you have. I, I forgot. But to enter this contest, all you have to do is on whatever podcast app you're using to listen to us. If they have a rating system, rate us. Hopefully a five-star rating. Snapshot that with your camera, you know, little screenshot. Send that to our email or on Facebook or Messenger or Twitter, Messenger, whatever you, you have easy access to your phone. Uh, the screenshot showing that you rated us uh, and we'll enter you into the contest. And you do that for as many podcast apps you rate us in. And we're hoping you're going to rate us in Spotify because that's what we're trying to get uh, our rating to show up on the podcast there. We do have quite a few subscribers there. Um, I can't imagine if all you subscribers that are subscribing, if you just go and just hit that star button and give us five stars and hit enter, we will be showing up soon. We have a lot. I don't think it's, I don't think it requires like a hundred stars to go ahead and uh, do this. I hope not. (laughs) I hope it's like 25 to 50. So, uh, but, uh, but right now we've got four people that send in their screenshots of Spotify, um, well, I mean, if uh, if Connor's on here, jumping in here, asking, you know, why we're recording now and telling us he wishes he could uh, chase beer with us, Connor <laughs> should get on Spotify and, uh, you know, enter in to win a Frost Buddy also. Yeah. 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 So you can win a Frost well, Buddy. And Chris will tell you what, if you if you don't know what a Frost Buddy is, he'll tell you at the end of the show what a Frost Buddy is. So stay on to the end. Yes. So glad okay. you didn't ask if I was going to show it. I no, don't no, it. You don't have, no problem. No problem. <laughs> All right, Chris, let's continue the conversation because now it's time to untap the craft and see what our listeners are drinking according to untapped. Well, let's see. Let's, that was yesterday. It's going to be a short list today. Just because mm, I don't want to read that one, Chad. <laughs> Wait, Chad just did he just did he do another one? Okay, so this is uh this is gonna be my uh I've got one page. I don't have to scroll through and click see more. Uh so this is gonna include beers from yesterday. Okay, and yeah. to, and today? Uh yesterday, yeah, I'm sorry, yesterday and today. Um so first check-in is from someone I haven't read on the show yet. Uh, Shannon Sweatman is a friend of mine here in the Tampa area. She's drinking a goat dog hazy IPA by Florida Avenue Brewing Company at uh, Rock and Brews in Wesley Chapel. She gave that a four cap, four and a quarter cap rating for that beer. No notes to go along with it. Jeff Seiler is drinking a beep beep by Tripping Animals oh. Brewing. <laughs> There's a road runner on it. Oh, yeah, I bet. Um, I, I imagine there was. <laughs> yeah, so he said, so yummy, fruity, and mildly sweet. I loved the Roadrunner and Wiley Coyote. Still do. Four cap rating for that beer and a really cool label on that one. I'll read it just because I don't want to be, you know, one-sided. Chad Lamasa is drinking a Berries and Cream Dream Sickle by Big Oyster Brewery. All the berries and cream. Nice beer to start the NHL season off with. Go caps <laughs> and four and a quarter caps for that beer. Sorry, Chad. I, uh, I, I have to, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, anyway, um, moving on to the next one. Lauren F is drinking a burger Meister by crooked can at city works eatery and poor house at Disney Springs for cap rating for that one, but no notes to go with it. Chew your beer or as, lay people know him robert <laughs> um is drinking an alpha dingus by Moonraker brewing company first in my community to untap this beer buddy you're getting 
I hope you're getting badges for being first in your community for all these. First in my community to untap this beer, Wet Hop Edition, crisp, clean, and so fresh with pine citrus bitters, dry. Four and three quarter caps for that check in. Um, Alex Fuchs, oh man, I got to speak German now, uh, is drinking a Lowenbrau Martin by Spatzen Frank Zikaner Lowenbrau Group at the brew shop. Uh, four cap rating for him, but no notes to go along with it. He's also drinking the Tuker Oktoberfest Lager Beer uh, by Tuker Brow. Uh, four cap rating for that one. Jeff Seiler. Jeff, you're on a record of just picking up. You're shopping by beer labels again, aren't you? Yeah, I think you are. Super. He's drinking a desolate divide on the on this eastward metamorphosis by burial beer company uh super tasty hazy ipa fruity and piney awesome can art that's what he said uh four cap rating for that beer and he also checked into a hyper color by commonwealth brewing uh absolutely delicious hazy double ipa fruity and mildly sweet four and a quarter caps and also the double dry double dry hopped double citra daydream by other half brewing another hazy double IPA. So damn tasty four and a half caps. Mr. Bill Schlemmer is drinking a start fruit IPA by Moody tongue brewing company. I'm mostly getting bitter notes with only a hint of fruit, maybe guava, not a fan (laughs) of this beer, which I'm having at the grocery store before shopping. Uh, yes, I agree to Connor. Hell yeah. to other half. He said, uh, three and a half caps for this beer. Um, this is the beer that you and I were bouncing back and forth with Chad Denny. Yeah. Chad Lamasa is drinking a tawny frog mouth by Evergreen Brewing Company. Juice bomb, lots of citrus, some honeysuckle sweetness, four and a half cap rating for this one. Uh, carb- that carbonization is coming I, I back know, up. I know. It's been, uh, <laughs> I've been trying not to burp into the mic. <laughs> Carbonation's coming up. And Mark Connor. Checking into a Fruit Drops Triple Berry Smash by Maine and Mill Brewing Company. Nice. Were you trying to type nice? He wrote N-I-S-E. Nice is berry. Go figure. Taste is tart and fruity. It is a nice (laughs) blend of the berries without any medicinal flavors. We gave that one a four cap rating. I'm going to refresh here. And uh, that's what everybody's drinking. Okay. Yeah. I, I was glad to see that when I, I went on untapped to kind of see if I had any new and noteworthy beers, I saw that Chad had just checked into the beer and I was happy because we were recording this not on the normal day. And I was afraid he wouldn't have a check-in to keep his streak alive. So I made a comment on that. And then he's a smart man because he does check-ins on Monday as well as Thursday. Mm. So he can get his new beer Thursday badge and he says he's three he's only three levels away from maxing it out like me uh, that's the only badge that i have an untapped that means anything to me because that's a real badge because <laughs> you can't cheat badge. that you can't cheat that one you have to no i mean no, you, you could can't. if you weren't drinking real beers but if you drink real beers on do it every thursday and not just cheat and drink it on wednesday and log it in on thursday yeah uh, that's a good badge to get but you still have to do the work to make sure every thursday you Check it into a unique beer. Okay. Well, I was successful in finishing off my wonderful Dunkel. Wow. That, I really do like that beer. Um, it's just kind of a, a, a an easy drink and very, it's very drinkable. I just loved it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so thank you, Chris, for that, uh, that treat. You're very welcome. My, my, my first Berry House beer was very, uh, uh, very nice. Okay, so let's go into our second Tasting Notes segment segment tonight. And we are continuing on with the Berry House Bear. This one is the Tampa Export, which has this nice, big, giant, what is that? Uh, That's a boat, Denny. For someone in the Navy, I would hope you would know that. Well, I was thinking, (laughs) is it called a cutter? A schooner, a a cutter. Uh, That's um, a boat. It's, it's a, a big ship. boat with lots of sails on it. It's a big boat. And maybe some pirates. Oh, there's a pirate flag. Yes. See, look. There's uh, a pirate flag on we this. We do it's have pirates pirate. here. Yeah. So, okay. This is their 
export, Tampa export, they call it on the can German style gold lager, but they, uh, looks like everywhere else in the rating programs, I'll call it a Dortmunder export lager. 5.8% ABV. So I'm going to crack this thing open. Ooh, that sounded nice, didn't it? I've had, it did. I, I've had this beer many, 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 many times. times. Many times. Um, okay. And I, when I see it on tap somewhere, um, I will get this as a, this is just a, it's a good fail safe for me because I also see this in places where I might not just, I can see myself through the glass. I might as well just glass. record. Nice. I might as well just record this way for the rest <laughs> of the show. Now that is a beautiful beer right there. Now it's a fun house. Yeah. I can see you through this glass too. Even with all these, but again, nice yeah. bubbles. Yeah. And this time, Good look at the solid head. Solid head on this thing. Look at the head. This is beautiful. This is exactly what I expect to see on a, uh, on a lager. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Wow, it smells, it smells so smells good nice. too. Yeah. Got a little dankiness to it. Yeah, a little dank. There is a little dank to it. But man, that is wow. And it's super clear. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I can I can see you through this beer, Chris. I'm looking at you through the beer. <laughs> That's amazing. Really good. Nice bubbles, too. I really like the bubbles in the head. Okay. Appearance 10 out yeah, of 10. It's this beautiful. thing is beautiful. It's a light golden just a light golden color, very light gold, uh, crystal clear, nice bubbles coming up. Head is just right. Uh, it, it was a, a two finger head. It's now down to a yeah. one mine's, finger head. Mine's about gone. Your, yeah. Yours is gone. Uh, it's got a, and it's and the head is white. It's a, it's a white head, uh, a mixture of coarse and fine bubbles. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful beer. Love, love the, love this. I like to I like to look at this beer better than the than the uh, dark, <laughs> yeah. just because it's just I mean, just it's a beautiful beer. I mean, even on the camera, it looks so nice. I mean, mm -hmm. man, that is it's, a, it's, it's almost it's it's so yellow and orangish. It's like jewel toned, like it's yeah, so just like crisp and bright. It's jewel toned. Exactly. Okay, so far I'm very impressed, and. uh, Wow, there's uh, you can definitely definitely smell a little graininess. You in get it. the graininess, mm -hmm. and 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 the hops are. Oh, I'm starting to burp that other beer up. Still. Oh, wait till you talking, drink this I got, one. Then I got so excited. <laughs> I mean, this one does have a little cereal, um, like malt uh, character. Smells really good. This one has. This one definitely has more aroma characteristics mm -hmm. than the other one did it, 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 it there's a lot of stuff going on in here you can smell both the malt and the hops um it really reminds me of a a lot like a pilsner uh as far as the aroma okay aroma's good okay so so the the visuals were great aroma is good let's go ahead and take a sip of this thing Oh, wow. There's a lot going on in this thing. Yeah. <clears throat> this is not, this is not a boring. <laughs> no, it is this not at all. Is really. Wow. I can't even, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. There's a lot going on in here. This is a, for this beer it looks so plain. This beer has got a lot of good flavors. I can't even, I can't even put it to words. It's got, it's this got one's, graininess. You can mm -hmm. taste the graininess in it. It's like a little bit of biscuity, biscuity, yeah. Um, yeah, got, got very, biscuity very light for sure. Very, very light toast. Very light, if anything. Yeah. Uh, but it's it it's really one of those beers where you do have to sit and try to separate the malt and the hops from it because it. I think it really works. Can you hear me? Can you see me? There we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So someone started a, a, 
a YouTube video. You better, you better yeah. tell those guys to knock it off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut Aria's phone off right yeah, now. Yeah, shut it off and say, <laughs> "Hey, I told you tonight is special. You can get oh, your internet back." <laughs> it's starting to burp up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, the hops and the malt, they, they really do play well together in here. Yeah. I'll say this is an incredible, a, incredible lager that anyone who says they don't like lagers, they should try this one. Cause this man, this has got so much good, like various flavors. It even has a little bitterness at the end that, at the very that tells end. you, Hey, I, I'm, I, I'm in here too. So it's mm -hmm. not like that last one. I think, I think this this had this dark had zero bitterness at all. It, oh, yeah. I, I, I had no bitterness in that. But this export has a little bit of bitterness that just like finishes off this the everything like really well. And it lasts it lasts for a very long yeah. time, but it's very subtle. So it's not something where you're gonna drink it and it's just gonna be this just hop flavor coating, this hop bitterness coating your your palate. And it's just, just all the way back on the palate. Yeah, there. Yeah, there's some. Yeah, this is great, man. I love this beer, and now I know why you drink this all the time, Chris. This is, I it, and it's not heavy. It's not. Mm -mm. It's not like like coating. It's or like, I mean, with this much stuff going on, sometimes you might think it would be like, uh, you know, coating your mouth and and just like being heavy. Uh, it's not heavy. It's got a little bit. It's a, I'll say it's a little bit. It feels a little heavier than the the dark was. That mm -hmm. one would seem a little bit lighter. This one's probably. Uh, I'll drink some more just to make sure I get the body. But just, just I think sure. because you you're going through that wide range of flavors to and finishing off the bitterness, it just feels like there's a lot of stuff going on in your mouth that makes it seem like there's. I mean, because. Because when you have those flavors, you're also getting sensations that are, are acting on, on the the malt character in there and the the hops and the flavors and there's something right in the mid. Like as you transition from the malt to the bitterness, I'm trying to pull out to, maybe maybe by the end of the beer I'll be able to say what that flavor is too. But but uh, yeah, this is a. This is a delight. Now I know why you wanted me to make sure that we uh, we drink this one together. <laughs> yeah, there, there. I um, <clears throat> like I said, anytime I see this, if I'm going to dinner somewhere or if we're out and about, and I can go for a couple of beers, but like this is great just to have with a meal or just to, mm -hmm. you know to sit down grab a beer like i would drink this by the pool hanging out at the beach you know that kind of thing yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i like it i like it a lot uh i i recommend anyone that can get berry house uh, actually any of their beers i hear all their beers are great but it's, i can specifically speak to the two we just had now um that dark was fantastic for a for a German Dunkel lager. And this uh, Tampa export is fantastic for uh, Dortmunder export lager. Uh, uh, top notch. Uh, yeah. Okay. Chris, what else? Uh, uh, is someone giving you a bad time for cutting nope. them off? Nope. <laughs> nope. Oh, okay. So uh, I think this is uh, this will do it for our tasting notes segment. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna sip on this as we go through our our uh, topic of the night. Uh, before we get into that, though, I wanted to say we are gonna have another our next show. We will be doing the Cigar City 2022 Hunapoo's Imperial Stout that Chris also provided me. Such a such a wonderful friend. Uh, so that will be in the next episode, 216. So if if by any chance you got anyone out there has one of these, you want to taste along with us, save it. Join us either on Monday, October 31st, or while you're listening to the show and see our tasting notes compared to your tasting notes. And as far as the recordings, yeah, we will be doing the normal recording, hopefully, fingers crossed, yeah. uh, on October 31st, which is Halloween. Mm -hmm. And Chris... 
you're still okay with Halloween, right? Okay. So that'd be Monday, October 31st. That would be our normal, normally scheduled recording, mm -hmm. but we will have to move 217 up a week to November 7th because I will be uh, the next week I'll be in Hawaii. So yes, I'll be drinking some Hawaii beers and I'll be able to be able to report back on episode 218 of some of these unique Hawaiian beers that I had to got to try while I was in uh, Kona. So I just want to give everyone a heads up. Uh, I don't like uh, confusing everyone. Like when you expect us to be recording on Monday and we're not there and you guys are all sad. I don't want, I mean, that's why Eric Gromley's not here. Poor guy's <laughs> waiting for Monday and he's going to show up and, and we're not going to have a show. So I'm sorry, Eric. Okay, Chris, let's get into the brew buzz. And the brew buzz is devoted to various related topics. And this week, as we mentioned earlier, we're just going to go over a quick recap of the Great American Beer Fest 2022 uh, stats on how, uh, you know, how many beers and, and winners and stuff like that. Again, we're just doing a snapshot. Uh, I'll let Chris go into more detail on some of these if he wants to. <clears throat> I didn't have a lot of time to put this together. I just kind of put in, put together the, the basics here. Uh, but we, hey, we can spend as much or little time as, as we want. Uh, we all know that, uh, you know, that our favorite states didn't uh, win as many medals as we like. And yeah. all of them went to California. But, hey, you know what? You can't win them all. <laughs> it's because California is so damn big. Yeah, it's so big. It's, it's got a lot of breweries. All right. So I'll just read this summary here. And so basically... <laughs> The 2022 Great American Beer Festival opens. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I. I think I accidentally copied something else in here. I'll just say uh, it, it was. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Uh, something something yeah. happened. And I, I I deleted something. But uh, basically, <clears throat> we had the 2022 Great American Beer Festival. The competition awarded three 300 medals to the best commercial breweries in the United States. Uh, Award-winning breweries received prestigious gold, silver, and bronze medals in 98 beer categories covering 177 different beer styles, uh, including all the subcategories, and establishing the best examples of each style in the country, in this country. Mm -hmm. The competition took place in three phases over a period of nine days and was judged by 235 beer experts from seven countries, including the U.S. with over, with well, or actually not over, actually nine thousand nine hundred and four commercial Jesus. brewery entries. That's a lot of beer. Yeah, almost ten thousand beers. You uh, got to figure they don't they don't send in just a bottle or two. Yeah, they send out. Yeah, they send a lot. They send, of, yeah, I think they got to send at least like like at least a couple bottles. of five gallon kegs. <laughs> I don't know about that, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I need to ask, we need to have John back on and, uh, you know, so he can let us know about his feedback. He's gotten back on his beers and what he's submitted and how, what that process is. That'd be a great show. Uh, maybe I'll talk to him and see if he can come on. No, he can't. He won't come on, on, on Halloween. He's got little kids. So never mind. We'll get you some other time, John. Okay, Chris, why don't you go ahead and read off some of these uh, competition statistics for this year? All right. So this is the 36th edition of the GABF competition. Now, there was something on it that I was reading, too. Like, it kept popping up as, like, their 40th anniversary, though. Oh, I don't know. Um, either way. <clears throat> Um, there were, like Denny said, 9,904 beers judged in this competition i i've wanted to judge brewing contests uh <laughs> I, I i had never finished my uh bjcp certification um and i just i'd imagine there's a lot of spitting going on <laughs> yeah yeah a lot of rinsing spitting uh um oyster cracker eating and then yeah. sipping and, and coffee then, smelling and then and... trying to like okay well how you know what what i read this one well this one tastes very similar like the last one but mm -hmm. i mean how do you differentiate between all these beers now there's 235 judges and nearly 10,000 beers that's a lot of beers to be drinking by these judges or at least sipped 
That's uh, 42 beers per judge. Yeah. How do you, how do you actually, how can you take 42 beers and really provide your full attention to them? Doesn't seem right. They need to get. They need some more judges. They need more judges. They need I'll, to have. I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> yeah. I volunteer as tribute. Um, so there's 177 beer styles and uh, 2,154 breweries in the competition from all 50 states plus Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. Uh, like we said earlier, 235 judges, 310 volunteers. Maybe that's nice. our end, Denny. Maybe yeah. we volunteer. Yeah, I mean, like Eric Gronley did at the World Beer. Yeah. Um, the average number of competition beers entered into each category was 99. So keep that in mind next time you want to go enter your beer into mm-hmm. the GAB- GABF. You're going to compete with 99 other beers. At least you did in 2022. Um, the category with the highest number of entries, this is every flipping year. Yeah. Uh, the American style IPA with 423 entries into this category. 300 total medals were awarded, including three Pro Am and three collaboration medals. 268 medal winning breweries. Ah, so that means. Some breweries run one more than one. Oh, yeah. uh, 301 first time GABF entrants and 18 first time GABF winners. I like seeing stats like those last three, or yeah. at least the last two, because last it's really two, cool. Yeah. It's really cool to see that, hey, just because you know you're not Cigar City or you're not Sierra Nevada or you're not, I don't know, I'm just kind of naming off some bigger breweries, but there's still hope, right? You, yeah. I love the fact that, that this, that the, the beer, the beer world, uh, always tries to do one bigger and better. Um, yeah. and then you, and then you get stuff like this beer and you just go, no, oh, I'll stick with this. This one's pretty good. Wait, is that the export still? You it haven't is. drank very much of it. I've almost finished my, <laughs> well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a, I got a problem. All right. <laughs> so, so, uh, Chris, I'll go ahead and read, now we're going to talk about the most entered style categories and the top winners of these. I'll, I'll start off with the first one and we just will go back and forth between the, the styles. So the, as Chris already mentioned, the American style IPA had the most entries at 423 and the gold medal, the gold medal winner. Should I, should I go gold to bronze or bronze to gold? Well, you know what? Let's mix it up. Let's go from bronze to gold. Okay. So I'm going to make your brain work. Yes, yes. Okay, so the bronze medal winner for American IPA was from North Park Beer Company out of San Diego, California, called the Hop Fu. And, and we might see this name uh, many times uh, throughout this uh, talk. So they won a bronze. The silver medal winner for American style IPA is from Rip Beer Company in Huntington Beach, California, called the Dankster Squad. <laughs> And I've seen Rip Beer. We get Rip Beer here. Uh, now that I know they make some good IPAs, I should probably try more of their beers. And the gold medal winner from Comrade Brewing Company out of Denver, Colorado, more Dodge, less Ram. <laughs> okay. It's a great name. Yeah, yeah. More Dodge, I like that less name. Ram. So they, so they, were, they won the gold oh, medal. Speaking of Eric Gronley, cheers, guys. It's Is it Monday already? <laughs> Well, hey, oh, yeah. e- Eric, you just missed us talking just like five minutes ago. We said we feel bad for Eric because he's always here on Monday and we're not going to be there on Monday for for the recording. But uh, but hey, I'm glad you made it on to uh, to, to see us uh, record a little bit of this show where we're talking about the Great American Beer Festival medal winners, uh, which you probably already know. And maybe, you know, we said that uh, in, earlier we said there's 310 volunteers. So, Eric. Next year, you should put your volunteer hat in to go to the Great American Beer Fest. Uh, Mike Allen was there. Yeah, he did, yeah, he he did go. There. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to the next category, the Juicy or the Hazy IPA. It was 375 entries into this category. And starting off with the bronze medal, you got a Rad AF from City Barrel Brewing Company out of Kansas City, Missouri. Um, next for the silver, you've got the IPO IPA. That's just fun to say. <laughs> IPO IPA. Um, 
It's from White Rock Ale House and Brewery in Dallas, Texas, and the Anheuser Kush, which I'm so <laughs> glad they. God, I love breweries like this. So Anheuser, they spelled A N H Y Z E R. Anheuser Kush. Um, yeah, definitely a marijuana. Uh... Well, Kush part, yeah. I'm not sure about Anheuser, but that's pretty well, awesome. I'm, yeah, but it all. I mean, that's what they would name some kind of uh, weed variant, right? It's yeah, a funky, I don't, funky I don't, name. I don't know. <laughs> so I hear the kids tell me. Um, Flatland Brewing Company out of Elk Grove, California. Yeah. So uh, interesting that I haven't heard any of these breweries, and but they're making some good hazy IPAs. Yeah. Uh, I and I only, I think I've heard of North Park because of of uh, Robert to your beer. Uh, uh, he's checked into a few of those, and I've heard of rip because i've had i think i've had one rip beer and i've seen them locally that i just haven't picked them up yet but now i will and i and i heard of con con comrade from last year when they won they won some hardware last year i remember that (coughs) okay all right so let's get out of the hoppy stuff for a minute and actually let's get out of the hoppy stuff for the rest of the show look at that german style pilsner is a third 233 entries bronze goes to shred monk brewing and coffee house out of bozeman montana that just called german pilsner well look at is winning uh they make some great pilsners good for them oh here's a name i definitely have mentioned many times mm-hmm. on the show silver better goes to von ebert brewing uh, the Pearl District in Portland, Oregon. And this is called Pills. And I've talked about this. This is one of my new and early beers that I love. I talked about it either last show or show, show before last or one before that. I can't remember. And it won silver. So I guess I know a little bit about in good beer because I like that one. And uh, the gold medal winner goes to the Austin Beer Garden brewing company out of austin texas it's called industry they won the gold there we go 233 entries that's pretty good for you know for a pilsner right german style pilsner that's that's nice so then moving on to another german style the wheat ale it's 209 entries in the wheat ale um moving from the bronze you've got wild pitch from sandlot brewery in denver colorado uh, you've got Crystal Weissen for the silver from Bearded Tang Brewing in Stanton, California. And uh, North Central Ohio is bringing home the gold for Fatheads Brewery with their oh, Alpen nice. Glow. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I don't think Fatheads has not been a GABF medal winner in like you know, I... at least a decade. They oh you mean they've they, taken they, they've, a, they've, they've taken they a medal. had one yeah. if not five Something. or six per like they, they they always win at least one yeah I will say in the last couple of years they haven't won as many as they had before because before they were winning like five that they like they were I think the most at one point they were the most medal winning brewery at one point in, in the time we've been doing the show um, but yeah good and you know what's nice is that. Um, We've got at the top at the top five entries that were you know is all you know three of those five are German style beers. The last one is German style Martin. Seven entries. Uh, I guess it works because it is Martin season, so why not you know provide a Martin? So bronze goes to Great Dane Pub and Brewing out of downtown Madison, Wisconsin. And it's called Great Dane Oktoberfest, bronze medal. Never heard of Great Dane, but me either. But uh, I bet, uh, I bet uh, Bill Schlimmer has. Call my then buddy we've got Mike. this. <laughs> yeah, we've got silver. Goes to Dry Dock Brewing from North Dock, uh, or the North Dock. I don't know. This, I, I guess they, they put these uh, breweries, they have multiple breweries, they say which one it was. So the North Dock uh, out of Aurora, Colorado uh, for their Docktoberfest. Hmm. So it's kind of, I mean, if you're in 
Colorado, I would say that your dry, your dock is definitely dry. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. Is there is there very many uh, lakes and waterways there for docking? For in Wisconsin? No, in Aurora, in, Colorado. Oh, in Colorado. I mean, I, I I've never been. So I can't really say. I, I have been to Colorado, and in the north, on the west side is lots of Rocky Mountains, and on the east side is desert, Highland Desert type uh, so, area. So I don't know about any waterways. So I find it funny it's called Dry Dock Brewing. All right, enough of that. And the gold medal goes to Mighty Squirrel Brewing out of Waltham, Massachusetts, and it's just called Oktoberfest Gold Medal. Way to go, Waltham, Mass. Yeah. And that's, uh, I, I like the name of that brewery too, Mighty Squirrel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we're going to, so we're going to uh, move into the most meddled brewery. It's uh, North Park Beer Company out of San Diego, California. They took what, two, two bronzes, a silver and a gold. Uh, their bronzes were in um, uh, Imperial IPA, American style IPA, Juicy or Hazy Imperial IPA. So what you're saying is, was that, I swear I said silver. Oh, did you say, oh, you, maybe you didn't come across. I just want to clarify. It was silver. for It the, was silver for the, for the hazy or juicy. <laughs> and then the gold, the English IPA or New Zealand, New Zealand IPA. So what is it? Just using New Zealand hops? Well, yeah, that's what we thought. We, we had this question in another show when we saw did New we? Zealand IPA. Yeah. We, we, we commented on the fact that what is a New Zealand IPA? Well, obviously it must be similar to an English IPA. If, we were assuming it was the New Zealand hops, but maybe not. We'll have to dig into that for yeah. another episode. But uh, something tells me if you can get North Park beer, go buy their IPAs. Well, that's all they make, probably. <laughs> <laughs> they would they do one thing well, and that's IPAs. Hey, it's better than doing nothing well. Well, they are in California, Southern California. You know that they don't. You know, pretty much they only drink IPAs there. So. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got through all that, let's go ahead and just highlight, you know, I'm in Idaho, and I always love seeing Idaho breweries winning medals. Uh, and, of course, Chris is in Florida, in Tampa, so he likes to see Florida breweries winning medals. So uh, I'll go ahead and talk about the two medals we won this year, only two. Two. But it, two is better than what we had last year, which was zero. So I'll take the two. Um, and, and here's a... An interesting thing is, of course, one of the breweries I talk about all the time, and I do enjoy this beer, but the other one I've never heard of, and I need to go north. I need to go north to Sandpoint, Idaho, because there's a brewery called Matchwood Brewing Company in Sandpoint, Idaho, that made a herb and spice beer called Spruce Tip Pale Ale that won a bronze medal in that category. Uh, and I, you know, I love spruce tips in my beer. Um, so I think I might enjoy that. Pale Ale is from Mother Earth Brewing. I talk about them all, all the time out of Napa, Idaho for their Hop Diggity Imperial IPA. And they won it in the, the silver in the Imperial IPA category. So good for them. Fantastic. Okay, Chris, I was lazy uh, because, you know, Florida had had quite a few winners and I I don't want to talk about Florida and highlight some of the cool ones you want to talk about. Yeah. Well, there were, there were a couple that, that stood out. The first one was going to be from cigar city, their Maduro Brown ale. Mm. Uh, nothing really stands out about it other than that's pretty much, they, they win that one pretty much every year, the bronze for their, for their Maduro. Um, and it's a good go-to beer for me. Um, when I flew out to go to Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of the reasons I love being able to fly Southwest is because on the Southwest side of the airport here in Tampa, there's a cigar city, uh, restaurant and brewery. <laughs> that's a bonus. Yeah. So that's normally my go-to when I go there, but, uh, cigar city Maduro, uh, they took a bronze this year. Uh, Tampa Bay brewing company is a place that we frequent pretty often, whether it's actually going to the, uh, location in Ybor city, for grabbing lunch with uh with some friends 
Uh, we'll be heading to, t- uh, to, to Badass Beer Fest here on November 5th at their, well, just outside of their location in West Chase and uh, just outside of Tampa. And uh, as much as I chat with the guys over at, um, at Gasparilla Pizzeria and Growlers about Tampa Bay Brewing Company, um, their day donkey. Now, donkey, the, the hey, I'm not even going to explain it because I'm going <laughs> to screw it all up. But their day donkey, they took a bra- uh, bronze medal for that one. Uh, great beer. I actually had it a couple, about a month ago and uh really really enjoyed that beer so if you can get tampa bay brewing company stuff definitely give that a try and this next one bullfrog creek brewing company now it's one of those breweries that nobody ever knows about unless they well know about it uh it's i don't know six minutes that way (laughs) and uh come to find out uh the brewer there is actually a client of ours oh we ended up training her dogs a couple, about a year or so ago. Um, it was for their hunting river, which is a German style Kolsch. And, uh, I was really excited to see them take a bronze medal because it, you know, it's, it's a very, very local brewery to mm-hmm. us. You know, they, they don't really distribute a whole lot. And, uh, like I said, it's basically five, six minutes right that way. So it was really cool to see them uh, take a medal and I'm glad to see that they were able to submit something. And um, they were actually doing a lot of relief work for the folks down in Southern uh, Southwest Florida with the hurricane and stuff. I mean, they're mm-hmm. loading up trailers and sending as much stuff as they can down there, whether it's, you know, just linens or water or gas or generate. I think they borrowed a handful of generators for people just to, you know, be able to give a little bit of relief from the folks down there. Cause they're still struggling with stuff. Um, I had a, a, my old boss at the boarding school where I used to work, he owns a business down that way. And he was telling me that fortunately all his trucks and stuff were stored in their garages, but mm. you know, he, uh, owns a pool company and he said that, yeah, we, we lost several customers just because, well, their house doesn't exist anymore. Oh no or, you know, that kind of thing. So it was really cool to see, uh, all the live feeds from bullfrog Creek of them packing up trailers, going down and trying to, to help out as much as they can. So it's a, it's a kind of a, kind of a prideful one. We got some pride in those guys just for going over there to help them. Plus, you know, we've helped train their dogs. <laughs> so, so that's, uh, that was the big takeaways for, for Florida medals at uh, GABF for us. Okay. Now, did you say that they, uh, that Florida won 12, 12 medals, Ooh. four golds, one silver and seven bronze. I didn't. So Florida won tw- <laughs> 12 medals, four gold, one silver and seven bronze, just like Denny said. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's a good, that's a good, I mean, that that's about, I, I, I mean, that's a good haul yeah. of medals really. Yeah. I mean, cause it seems like the, the states that have pulled out a lot of good ones we'll talk about here in a, in a minute. Uh, they all had about, you know, that's right in the average or median range of where, uh, where, where, you know, good, good brewery, good states that have good breweries were were pulling out medals. Now it's funny because the three you listed mm-hmm. were the three I was going to put on there of the of the twelve, and so I guess I know you pretty well because that those are the ones I was going to put on because I've heard you talk about these, so I figured. Yeah. Those are the ones you wanted to, to chat about. Well, one of the things that I just realized is that, yeah, there were 9,900 beers to be judged. <laughs> now, I don't know what our current United States brewery count is. I'd be willing to bet it's probably around the 10,000 10, th- Yeah, it's close mark. to 10,000. Yeah. Uh, only 20% of breweries submitted something. Yeah. So the 2,100 breweries in the competition. So... I'd, I'd love to be able to see, you know, other breweries be able to submit to that because I believe that's about what they submitted the previous year, like the, the number of breweries that competed. And I know it can't be cheap to, you know, mm. send 15, 20 gallons of beer to the middle of the country and just go, okay, here you go. I mean, do they get their kegs back? Like what is the, are the representatives for the brewery? Ke- I really think they send, uh, uh, bottles no i saw multiple pictures of where they've got skids uh pallets just shrink wrapped full of 
little yeah, pony but, but is that not for the the uh, the hall where people are going and trying beers? Maybe I, I think for the competition, it's all bottles. Again, John, write in. Let us know. Yeah, John, can you send a keg or you have to send bottles? What's what's the format? And uh, and if we need to, I'll join. I'll jump on and we'll just do a quick interview with you and we'll put it in the show since you won't be able to make the 31st for sure. But let me know. We'd like to hear. Okay. So let's just go over a couple of the other states that are familiar with us, right? We know John Ream, Trek Brewing is in Ohio. So how did Ohio do? Uh, 10 winners. Yeah. 10 winners, five gold, four silver, one bronze, one bronze. Uh, sadly, no Trek Brewing medal. No. Sorry. I want Maybe to next Trek year. Win. Yeah. I want to see Trek win, but, uh, but yeah, that's 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 not bad. Uh, Oregon, you know, the Oregon's the, you know the birth of craft beer, right? I don't know. Some people. Might say that. <laughs> uh, Eighteen winners, a uh, little lighter than usual, I think. I think they normally have them in the twenties. Uh, seven gold, seven silver, and four bronze. Washington State, nineteen winners, wow. just one above Oregon. Seven gold, five silver, seven bronze. Hey. Everyone's drinking beers out of North Carolina. They got some great beer there, right? Yeah. Asheville. It's another beer mecca. Winners. Five gold, five, three silver, and five bronze. And California, I didn't, I couldn't count. I started counting and I gave up because yeah. I, I lost track. There were so many medal winning that I think I stopped counting at 35. <laughs> so I don't know how many they won. They won, they won a lot. Uh, so good for them. Good for them. All right, so that is our recap of the Great American Beer Festival. Um, oh, yeah. here you go. Uh, the GABF requires bottled or canned beer samples for judging. It will not judge from cakes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it had to be You're so smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense too. Yes, I think the kegs were all for stuff that was going into the exhibit room. You know, where people are going and trying beers from all the breweries and all the stuff. I guess. You know, it's it's what's creating all the puke that people are slipping mm. in there. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, let's get <laughs> let's let's finish the show off with our new and noteworthy beer. So, Chris, why don't you go ahead and hit us up with your noteworthy beers? Well, I also got to uh, count in for Eric Gronley. He said I got to shout out my uh, the state of Minnesota. They had seven medal winners: four gold, four gold, and three silver. Wow. So the majority of nice. them were gold medal winners. Hot damn. Um, new and new, new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These are light beers, Chris. We shouldn't be slurring our words. I, um, <laughs> doesn't matter. It really doesn't. I, I could have what this, this Tampa export 5.8. It's five. Yeah. These are and this five, one, five the dark five. five. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I am a, uh, an easy, cheap date. Even as big as I am, I uh, I drank a um, uh, what's that beer from Sierra Nevada that I had before uh, before I started? Oh, I had a, a a sunny little thing. Oh, that that one that one a medal. Did it? Oh, so it's five percent. Yeah, in Great American right? Beer Fest. Yeah, um, as a five percent beer, uh, twelve ounces. I had a good little buzz on it. <laughs> So now that I've also piled you. 32 <laughs> ounces of good times, it's, uh, it's not uh, real hard to get me drunk. Just saying. Um, first beer on my new and okay. it's, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. So it was a, uh, very berry house beer company kind of week for me. Uh, their first beer that I'm going to talk about was actually Tina's beer. I just drank more. I drank a lot more of it. Um, Berry House Beer Company, their Maltica, which was a Imperial Baltic Porter. Super smooth, nice and roasty. Just all or, I, like I, it, it came in a very small glass because it was clocking in at about 10%. And uh, I gave this one a five cap rating. It was just a phenomenal wow. beer. Uh, nice. I wish I could, uh, I wanted to 
you know, bring a crowler home, Mm -hmm. but their crowler machine was broken. Mm. But that crowler would have probably cost me 30 bucks. So, so, um, okay. So it's a, I mean, we understand that Baltic porters are, uh, you know, are basically lagered, but they're using ale yeast, ale yeast at colder temperatures. Mm-hmm. But it's not really considered a lager. It just means that that, that the beer was was just fermented. At I thought the Baltic temp. porter was just a porter recipe using lager yeast. I don't know. We did a show on it. Man, I wish my memory was better. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just thought it maybe you're right maybe it is using uh yeast as lager so maybe it is a lager okay we'll, we'll, we'll have to revisit that um, yeah but i almost give every baltic porter a five because i just love that style i've i've had a couple recent i had a another one at, at um gasparilla i can't remember what it was called but it was just it was so good um but yeah the maltica the Im- imperial baltic porter five cab rating simple yeah. great um, wonderful beer. Um, the second one, I had this one uh, from Freem Family Brewers. This is way outside of my style that I like. Is their exactly. Ode Creek. Um, they're from 2018. I was able to try this beer um, f- with uh, Miguel from the No More Pours podcast, which is who I'll be uh, chatting with. Uh, at badass beer fest here in a couple of weeks um ode creek denny we we talk about those kind of beers all the time that i just i'm not really a fan Mm -hmm. but you know what four and a half caps for this beer um it was tart and cherry and it wasn't really funky or anything like that. Like that funkiness, that earthiness had kind of mellowed out a little bit. You can tell it was still there, but it wasn't something that was just, you know, make your stomach flip mm-hmm. upside down. Uh, so I was yeah. really, I was really happy to be able to enjoy that uh, with, with Miguel. Um, but man, just little bottle, <laughs> but uh, really did enjoy that. And then the third one is going to be again from Barry House. They're Bublina. They're uh, it's a Czech Pilsner. They gave this one four and a quarter caps. Um, very much like this uh, Tampa export that we were drinking. Um, I don't really remember too much about it, admittedly, because I was probably drinking too much of Tina's Maltica <laughs> Imperial Baltic Porter. Um, but I did rate it four and a quarter caps, and it's just. God, everything that they put out, I've enjoyed. Um, they even had a um, a smoked Bach. They had a smoked beer that was in there, and I I just asked them to try it. Man, that was even good. And I'm not really a huge fan of smoked beers, uh, but mm-hmm. it wasn't over the top. It was just good. Everything that comes out of that place. I'd say just go buy. I can. I would say I would go buy it blindly and not be concerned yeah yeah so far i'm impressed yeah so denny what about you what about some new and noteworthy beers for you okay so i have uh three beers uh two of them were provided by my buddy alex fuchs uh the first one is a beer he gave me uh over a year ago <laughs> himself and this is the keeper of the seven keys uh, again this is from his home brewer the three-legged crow home home brewery uh keeper of the seven keys 2020 version and this is an imperial stout uh aged on uh cherry liqueur so if i remember correctly and what, what I, so I held on to this for a while and I decided to go ahead and break it out and drink it at, you know, after our last recording episode, uh, a couple of days after that. And uh, I said, I've been holding on to this beer way too long. I need to drink it because, you know, he'll be bringing me another one for this year's version. So I need to make sure I finished the <laughs> one I didn't drink before. Uh, and so I, I said here on, in my untapped, I said, finally breaking open this beer, the carbonation is there. I can smell some spirits. 
and maybe some light cherry. The flavor is dark chocolate and slight roast, some oak barrel and slightly cherry flavor. Uh, only slightest burn of, and it was like a 10% beer, I think. I can't remember what the beer alcohol was, but I think it was 10%. Maybe yeah, it was a little higher. Uh, uh, really, I get a four and a half cap rating. And again, I, uh, and for a home brew, uh, that's pretty good if it can withstand, you know, that over time. And I really enjoyed this beer. So well done, Alex. Um, I look forward to this year's version as well. And then my next beer is uh, from Cascade Brewing. And this is one of the beers that uh, Kirk brought to me on that first visit where he brought me some very nice special beers. This is Vlad the Imp Ailer. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love I like the name. Uh, come on, then. the name That's is classic. I got that beer right here. So this is Cascade. Oh, that's terrific. Vlad. The aging for for uh, five years. Wow. So uh, the style, what this is, is a barrel-aged Belgian quad blend. So it's a mm. blend of different beers. And so so what I had wrote on here is, big thank you to Kirk for this beer. Decided to start the weekend off big. The aroma is amazing. Some sweet wine and orange. Uh, the flavor has wine tartness up front with some mellowing vanilla and finishing with a little more, with a little more sour finish. And it's 11.6% question mark, exclamation mark, because you would never know this beer was nearly 12%. Wow. It is so smooth and non-alcoholic and it's because it's a blend and it's blended and aged in wine barrels. Like it must be white wine barrels. And they added some orange peel zest to it. So it gives you a little bit of that, um, you know, zest character in there. Uh, really well done. And, for, and after five years, um, I'm still giving this beer a, a four cap rating uh, because it's really good. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I can't drink sours as often as I used to drink them mm -hmm. um, with my, you know, getting older stomach issues, esophagus issues. Uh, I really have to be careful because that extra acid reflux really causes me some, some harm, but uh, I really did enjoy this beer. Uh, nothing that a couple of Tums afterwards didn't help uh, uh, relieve some, uh, <laughs> some burning. And then the last beer I'm going to talk about is another one that Alex, my buddy Alex, brought to me last time he was here. And this is a, a, a special beer from Belgium. And this is the Brasserie de Achouf. And this is the Achouf 40th birthday edition Belgian Blonde Ale. And uh, I, I, really, I do enjoy these beers. And I, and I enjoy this one too. And because it's the 40th anniversary of this brewery, uh, why you know that's that's a that's a really nice uh, that's a really nice oh as I'm dropping beer bottles, but uh, here's that bottle too the Shoof Forty, and you can see the little gnomes oh, wow. right? Yeah, yeah, little gnomes. Everyone knows the gnomes from the, the Shoof beers. Also, while I'm at it, I have the bottle here from from Alex's homebrew. He really does a nice well, job. He that's his homebrew? Yeah. Yeah. He does this nice. He writes, he has a write up on here too. He has a barcode, like a QR code that you can go to. I mean, he does a really professional job. That uh, looks and, fantastic. And not only that, but check this out. This is the wax top logo he has on top too. Wait, maybe like that. It's his logo. Oh, Lord. And it's wax. That looks better than some just regular some commercial breweries. That I've yeah, seen. He, he really he really does a nice job. I really enjoy that. So, um, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> I guess, oh, those shoes. So, what I said about this beer uh, smells like a saison with some herbal spiciness. The flavor is lighter with a combo of coriander and sage with a touch of fruitiness in the finish from the yeast esters. The beer is dry and refreshing. Um, I like it. Thank you, Alex. So I gave that a four cap rating as well. It was a very nice Belgian golden, like a blonde, Belgian blonde ale. And that's it. Those are my new and no really short and sweet. 
So Chris, we're going to finish this show off, but before we end it, I always want to give you a chance to raise your glass to someone you'd like to raise a glass to. So who would you like to raise a glass to tonight? Well, when this finally releases on the 20th, it will be three days after my good friend Manny Velas. His birthday is on 1017. So, Manny, we'll raise a glass to you. Cheers, Cheers. my friend. Cheers yeah. to many more. And uh, salud, mi amigo. <laughs> uh, Denny, who would you like to raise a glass to? Well, I'm going to raise a glass to our Patreon toast tonight goes to Jeff Seiler, thank you, Jeff, for your many, many, many months of support. We really appreciate it. Um, so thank you for that. And my other so flexible and uh, being able to record on a moment's notice on a Thursday, uh, I really appreciate it. And yeah, I enjoy our – those are my toes. And, of course – all the servicemen and women out there protecting our freedoms, allowing us to get on here and talk about beer. Thank you for your service. And please, we hope you're able to return home safely to your family very soon. And Chris, go ahead and talk about our sponsor. Well, if you didn't know what, who or what a Frost Buddy was, Frost Buddy specializes in cooling containers for your beverage of choice. And Frost Buddy has the Universal Buddy 2.0, which is the world's first universal can cooler for 12 ounce cans, slim cans, bottles, and even 16 ounce cans. Frost Buddy also has the world's first universal wine cooler, 24 ounce stainless steel mugs, and even stainless steel dog bowls. You can go check out their website at frostbuddy.com. And how much did that break up? Did it break up? It broke up a little bit. That's okay. We got the gist. We got the gist. Okay. Go back and listen <laughs> well, to our previous episodes you'll be able to and you find can listen the to the other ones. And links to the articles mentioned in this show. As I say, go back and listen to other episodes. You can hear me read that again. Okay. I'm wait okay. I'm waiting for your camera to catch up to know you're you're back with us. You're back. I'm here. <laughs> okay. All right and links to the articles mentioned in the show in the show notes located on the show post at tapthecraft.com and if you'd like to follow us on social media I can be found on Twitter, Instagram, and untapped at Loose Screw and Chris if you can if you can stay live how can our listeners follow you? Am I still live now? Can you see yeah, you're me live. moving like you're Stevie live. Wonder? <laughs> okay so you can never find me on Twitter at Chris underscore McKenzie 82 uh, but you can find me on Untapped and Instagram at MCK1345. But you can always interact with us on everything social at Tap the Craft. All right. It is last call. It's time to bring the show to a close. We want to thank you for downloading and listening. We ask you to please tell a friend. And of course, subscribe on your favorite podcast app. And as a reminder, we release a new show every two weeks. Now go out there and spread the good word of craft beer. Cheers. That's Cheers. what's left of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of beer. Cheers ah. to the invisible glass. All right.